Now that you've made your first header component, let's take our learning to the next step. In this video, I'll walk you through how to use variables, properties, as well as conditions as we build a numeric up and down component. Let's check it out. I've pulled up a mobile sample app for restocking kitchen supplies, cups, plates, napkins, and utensils. Each one of these has a component beside it for incrementing a number up and down. We'll take a look at how to make this component and we'll do some learning along the way. We'll select components from the tree view, then new component. As a best practice, it's always good to rename your controls right away. I'll call this numeric up and down. Then I'll select its width and change it to 140 by 70 pixels. You can change this to an adaptive number if you'd like. I'll insert a text input field where the user can input their own number. I'll rename this control input value. I'll clear the default text and I'll set the format to number. Now you can only type in numbers. Next, I'll insert the other controls, an up arrow and a down arrow. I'll resize the two of them, selecting them first, going into their height, and I'll just set it to half the height of the overall component, 35 pixels. I'll move them. And this next step I like to do for all of my apps, I select the office blue theme. Just this nice finishing touch. I have the parts ready. Now let's configure the variable. How am I going to make these controls communicate a number to the rest of the app? I'll go to the on change property of the text input field first, and I'll type in a formula. I'm setting a, what I'm calling the selected value to whatever's typed into the input value. Uh, I'll start with its text, but I actually don't want text in that variable, so I'll convert it to a, ver uh, a value by using value. I go to the up arrow, and in its on select property, I'll give it an action as well. I'll set the same variable, selected value. This time, I'm going to take the same variable and add one to it. I'll copy that formula, select the down arrow. I'll go into its on select property and paste it. But for the down arrow, I want it to subtract one. The basic parts are ready. Let's go ahead and hook it up to one uh, custom property. I'm going to call it value. This is going to be the value that is outputted by the component. In order for the rest of the app to read the number that's going to come out of this, I have to set this up. I make it an output property of number type. I'll create it. Now I need to tell uh, the value property, what it should read. So I'm setting it to selected value, the variable. So I have this output property that's getting the information from the variable so that the rest of the app can read that variable. One more final touch, uh, the text input field, by default, I'll also set it to that selected value. Let's test things out. In the canvas view, I will go to the components menu and insert that component. Let's test it out. I click up and down. It works. And I could also input a number. But now I want to show you that you can also reference that output property. So I have this label and I'm setting it to numeric up down dot value. So anything that I type in there as I input uh, the up and down arrows, it'll respond accordingly. That's the basic minimum uh, component. Let's go ahead and do some more uh, advanced customization, some more properties that you'll find useful. For the remainder of the video, I'll walk through some common properties to include and get you thinking about what properties you want. I'll start with default. What default number do I want to appear in this numeric up and down? I'll make it as an input property because this is something I tell it to start with. And I don't need to reference it anywhere else. As soon as I create a property, it has a default amount. 
So I'll go to this default property that I just created and I'll have it start at zero. But I have an additional step. I also need the output property to go to that default value when nothing, when that variable is not declared yet. So the coalesce function means when selected value is blank, then show the default value. Otherwise, keep it as the variable. Now, um, because I also did the same thing to the default value of the text input field, I don't want to duplicate any logic. So I'll also point it back to that output property that I had made. That way I don't have to use, uh, I don't have to copy paste that formula. Let's create another custom property. This time I'll call it increment. Instead of increasing my number by one and decreasing it by one, I want that number to be variable. I want the user, the maker of the app who's using this component to decide that amount. So the increment is going to be the amount that the component will increase or decrease. It'll also be an input type property, again, because it's something I just want to tell this property to know. It'll be of number type. And again, as, I, as soon as I create that, I'll go ahead and put it into practice. In the existing formula for increasing a number, instead of adding one, I'm going to replace one with, and I'm, here I'm referencing the component name, dot that property, increment. I'll copy that. I'll go to the down arrow. And I'll replace one with uh, that amount as well, the increment. The text input field will not need that property since it's not going to be increasing or decreasing uh, by a set amount. Let's go ahead and go to its actual value. And instead of 100, which it starts at, we'll change it to one. Let's go ahead and create two more properties. This time, it'll be the minimum and the maximum values that we allow in this uh, numeric up and down component. These will be useful in creating the experience that you want. Let's say certain values are not allowed, like negative numbers or zero. Maybe you don't want that. Or maybe you have a maximum number that the user of the app should not exceed. So having these properties will be helpful uh, in uh, making the experience that you're looking for in your app. Once the two properties are created, we're going to be using some logic in each of those arrows. Let's go ahead and change the default amounts for the minimum and maximum. Again, they start at 100. I'll change the minimum to zero. And I'll hop over to the up arrow. Now, I do not want this number to exceed a certain amount. So I'm going to actually use the minimum uh, function. Whatever is smaller, if I were to add this number or whatever that maximum amount is, whichever one is smaller, stick with that. So it should not exceed that amount. It's a little backwards of uh, thinking, but it'll make sense once you try it. I'm going to do the same with the down arrow. This time, I want the minimum to be at least zero, right? So I'm going to use the maximum function, so it should not uh, be less than that. And I'll reference the minimum uh, value there. They both, the two arrows have the logic, but now to put the logic inside the text input field, I need to put in logic for the minimum and the maximum. I'll start with the minimum. Um, actually, let's go ahead and do the maximum. I do not want this text input field to exceed that maximum amount. So I want the smaller number. That's why I use the minimum function. And then I use the maximum function so that the number should be at least uh, zero. Now they're all wired to the minimum and maximum. Let's go back to the canvas and we'll go ahead and test, the, test out some of this logic. Uh, let's reset things. And as I increase, it's normal. 
let's go ahead and I can't uh, go below zero and I'm trying to click and it won't go beyond 100 because I put in that logic. And let's go ahead and change the increment to make sure that works out. Now I'm counting by tens and it will not exceed 100 and it will not go below zero. So I just shared with you some of the properties that I would have used inside a numeric up and down component. The big idea here is I set a default and then I create some parameters like maximum and minimum. It doesn't leave that area. I wanted this video to inspire you to think of what kind of properties you would include inside your component. The possibilities are endless, so you're only limited by your imagination. Go out there and do something creative with it.